Delivering the Mail When the truck was not needed for the villagers' gigs, I would help out other bands in town by taking them to their gigs. All of the band members of all the bands knew each other and were all friends. There was one such outing where I was taking the band society's children to a job they had in Onarga, Illinois. It was at a military school. I had never been there before, but I had heard about it and was excited to go there with them. It was about an hour away to the northwest of Danville. That Saturday afternoon, we packed the equipment and were all on board and headed north up Route 1. We hadn't gotten more than five or six miles into the intersection of Route 119, and they wanted to stop at the truck stop. So we stopped. All of the band guys jumped out and they scattered here and there, and I felt like a babysitter. I needed to get them rounded up and back on the road, so I got out and started looking for them. Some had gone inside for pop and candy. Others were checking out the fruit stands. Next thing I know, here comes one or two of them running toward the truck with pumpkins. I don't think they had paid for them, so I'm yelling at them to put them back. I didn't want them in the truck. So next thing I see is a couple of pumpkins being hurled in the air and toward some parked cars. Oh no, bam! One hit the side of a car and made a big dent. I wasted no time getting them all into the truck and off we went. I was the only one of the bunch that was over 21 and an adult, so I felt like I was responsible. This was going to be a nervous time getting them to the gig and back. We get to the military school and the guys set up and play the gig. The truck and I are patiently waiting in the back of the building. On the break, a couple of the band members come running around the building to the back. I could see that they were going over to a spot under the second story window. Sure enough, they were up to no good. They had found some supply room in the school and had pitched some boxes out the window. Now they were gathering them up and stashing them in the back of the truck. Oh no, they had cases of high sea drink and a case of toilet paper. Now I have stolen merchandise in the truck. I didn't know what to do, so I just kept quiet. Well, we got through the gig and out of town. What a relief. Only thing left was to get these characters home. One of the band members was Danny Odom. He was their lead singer and also played drums. This was definitely before he went to be the lead singer with the band Head East. There were four others in the band and it wasn't long before all of them were sound asleep, laying on top of the equipment in the truck. I would look back over my shoulder as I was driving them back to Danville and see them out of it, and also the stolen goods. We just got back to Route 1 north of Milford when the motor decided to quit. It was not out of gas this time. It was something a lot worse. There I was, pulled over to the side of the road at well after midnight, and the only one still awake. I sat there for a few minutes trying to figure out what to do next. Then, coming up behind me was a set of headlights. Who or whatever it was pulled over and stopped right behind me. Please don't be the police, I thought to myself. It wasn't. It was a guy with a truck, not a semi but a pretty big straight truck. He got out and came up and asked me if I needed help. I told him that the truck just quit and we had to get back to Danville. To my surprise, he said that he would hook onto me and pull the truck down the road to the all-night diner in Milford. There we could leave the truck and he would then take us to Danville. What a great guy. Then he said that we had to first stop at the post office in Hoopston to deliver several bags of mail. What? Deliver mail? I took him up on it. He got back in his truck and pulled around in front of my truck. He backed right up to the bumper, took out a chain, and chained the two trucks together. His instructions were to stay behind the wheel and keep the lights on. Also, when he puts on the brakes, I should too so that the brake lights would go on and also help slow down the two trucks. Off we went. Wow! We are rolling and it was really crazy. We were moving pretty fast and it was scary. All I could see was the back of his truck, which was completely filling the windshield side to side. My headlights were lighting it up like the 4th of July. After a short while, the guys started to wake up. One by one, they were opening their eyes and trying to decide if they were dreaming or actually seeing U.S. mail in huge letters spread across the windshield and me driving at 60 mile per hour 
one foot behind a truck. I can't imagine what was going through their minds. I explained to them the best that I could how this all was happening. It took them a while, but it wasn't long before they were all pretty excited to be delivering mail. We got to the diner and parked and locked the truck, and now, to get all five or six or seven of us into the cab of that mail truck. Stacked two and three deep, we headed off on the mission to deliver the mail. We backed into the loading dock at the Hoopston Post Office, and all the guys were happy to help unload the mailbags and get back on the road to Danville. As the sun started to rise in the east, the mail truck pulled into my driveway on Denmark Road. Thank you, Mr. Postman. I did get the truck back home and made good use of the high sea and toilet paper.